Hey guys, here we are for chapter 14, where we're going to look at mining mineral resources. As always, we're going to kick it off with a case study, the real cost of gold. You know, like our wedding band, right? It's the only thing I have that's actually gold. You, we think about gold, we go for the price to buy it. I don't know what it is now, $500 an ounce, $1,000 an ounce, whatever. Well, there's a lot of other costs involved with gold. There's a lot of harmful effects when it comes to gold mining. Massive amounts of rock have to be dug up just for a small amount of gold. The amount of gold that's in my wedding band probably took about like the size of your car. It took about that much dirt being dug up out of the ground to pull this much gold out of it. Gone are the days of us grabbing a pan, oh look, I found gold, you know, pulling out. We don't find that much gold laying around anymore or incredibly rare instances. We are mining very small bits of ore out of huge amounts of rock to get small amounts of gold. A lot of times we're using cyanide salts. Now the picture I'm throwing up here behind us is showing a gold mine. So that whitish area that you can see sort of in a bit of the foreground, these are the cyanide salts. We pour cyanide salts over it and allow that leach down into the settling tanks, the water kind of areas in front of it to pull gold. We dig all this rock out, we pour the cyanide salt over the top of it, that causes the gold to leach out of the rocks down into the settling tanks. We recycle that a few times and we pull out the actual gold, which is why it's expensive. It's rare, it's hard to get to, and it takes a lot of effort to get there. Now those ponds you see, these are completely 100% toxic to any kind of birds or animals that may come to it. And birds see it like a lake and they come land on it to try and get fish, etc. Or a deer or something else comes by like in the evening when everything's quiet and they go to drink from it. So this open water source is incredibly toxic, but it finds its way into the environment, obviously. These ponds, if they leak out, if they drain down, they can get into recharge zones and then leak into our water. Wasn't very long ago, in 2000, so just some 20 years ago, a gold mine dam collapsed in Romania and that area with the holding tanks broke open and that water rushed into the rivers like the Danube and hundreds of businesses had to close down. Anybody near it, they could not fish in it because of all the toxic metals and chemicals that got dumped into the regular river and drinking water supply. It was a horrible disaster just because one of these dams or levees holding up the holding tanks gave way. When it comes to digging and mining for gold, there's the cost of gold, but then there's the cost of gold. And sometimes we just need to try and find other ways to do things. We really need it in some electronics, etc. but there you go. Let's jump right into section 14.1. Today we're going to look at geology and mineral resources. So what do we mean by that? Well, geology, how the earth is. Geo, meaning the earth, the land, the rock. So this whole geological cycle, which is what really provides us with the rocks and the minerals. When we're talking about mineral resources, that's largely what we're talking about. Sometimes it's just mineral like gold, it's an element, but we're also a mineral. And a lot of our minerals we just find in various rock, in the ore. So this geological processes are just the dynamic processes within the earth and on the surface that produce the mineral resources. Now, mineral resources are non-renewable. Sure, the earth is in the process of recycling it and heating it up and creating more, but not in a human lifespan. The rock cycle is the slowest of all these natural cycles, like the water cycle or the carbon cycle or the phosphorus cycle. Well, the phosphorus cycle is getting into it. It's part of the rock cycle. It can be millions of years for rock to make its way and push down into the core and the whole process going along again. So all of the stuff we're mining, like our gold or aluminum and 
well, not steel. Steel is an alloy, a mixture of different metals and minerals. However, they're non-renewable. They're not gonna come back in your or my or really a human lifespan at all. And this takes us to geology itself. Geology is just the study of the dynamic processes taking place. There are three major concentric zones. We're talking about geology, very simple. Let's go from the very bottom up. The core, and of course we have an inner core and outer core, but we just have the core, we have the mantle, and then we have the crust. Now the mantle, depending on when we're looking at it, also has, it goes from being liquid right near the core to being very hard, near rigid, near the crust. The athenosphere is that sort of in between, the pliable layer. And then we have the crust. The crust is this upper layer. Now we can talk about it in two terms. We have the continental crust, where the continents are, and the oceanic crust, what's under the ocean. So technically the oceanic crust would be 71% because 71% of our Earth is covered by water. Continental crust, oceanic crust just below it. So core, mantle, crust three big factors, if you will. And then we come down to minerals and rocks. Now, all the minerals and rocks that we find and that we're using are in the crust. We've never dug down to the mantle. We can't really reach it, not easily anyway. So we're talking about everything we find is up here on the crust. Minerals are just naturally occurring chemical elements or compounds that exist as a crystalline solid. Most of them are compounds. Very few would be elements, but we have them. Gold, aluminum, iron, handful are actually elements, but most are some sort of compound, a mixture of them. So it's just mineral, and then we talk about a mineral resource. A mineral resource is where there is enough concentration of that particular mineral that we can extract it at a reasonable cost. Once again, if it's going to cost me a million dollars to get this amount of gold, we're not going to do it, right? Nobody's going to buy it for that much. But if we can extract it and it's for a hundred or so dollars, okay, now we're in the range of it being worthwhile. So a mineral resource is just where there's enough mineral in an area that we can extract it economically. We can actually make a profit from it. Once again, they're always non-renewable, part of the rock cycle. So we talk about minerals, a mineral resource where we have enough of it, and we just talk about rock. Now, rock is just a solid combination of one or more different minerals. Like, we can talk about the three different rocks. We talk about rock. We have sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock made up of yeah, sediments. But whether it's leaves or plants or little bits of broken rock, it's all these little sediments. They settle down to the bottom of a lake, a river, a pond, what have you, or even the ground. And then pressure pushes them down. Sometimes some chemical reactions are occurring and it pushes it into rock. And we get different types of them. Like coal is basically plant matter that's been crushed in, but it's sedimentary. Limestone, which winds up being lots of shells and other things from animals crushed down and into it. But sedimentary, it's just these sediments stack up, gets pushed down and turn into type of rock. We have igneous rock. Igneous rock forms under intense heat and pressure. This is where rock, rock is getting created down near the core and the bottom of the mantle. This is kind of the breath of the rock cycle, if you will, where igneous is being created. And we have metamorphic. Metamorphic, metamorphized, changing from something into another. So we take an existing rock, could be a form of igneous, could be a form of sedimentary. We take like granite, form of igneous and it gets heated and under pressure and we can get nice. And in nice, you can see these nice neat little swirls where it's been heated and changed around. So three types, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. Metamorphic is where some sort of existing rock has been subject to high temperatures, pressures, fluids, or some combination of them. I think my favorite is marble. Marble is limestone that's undergone enough heat and pressure. So limestone in the right circumstances turns into marble. Pretty cool. So the rock cycle. We have three different types of rock and we talk about it. 
It takes millions of years for a rock to go through this whole cycle. It's a formation of erosion, rock getting big rocks, getting broken up into smaller rocks, sand, dust, what have you, melting, especially when we're talking about in the core or in the mantle anywhere, and metamorphism, where a rock, maybe it's not melted all the way, but it's heated up enough that it changes its internal structure. Obviously, the rock cycle, as we've mentioned, is the slowest of all of our cycles here on the planet Earth. Now, if we want to talk about these non-renewable mineral resources, how do we go about them? Well, a few different terms we'll talk about. Ore and resources. Ore. This is why I talk about copper ore, iron ore, gold ore. What I'm talking about is rock that's got serious amounts of gold in it, as opposed to this piece of rock over here, which has maybe no gold or one teeny tiny little fleck somewhere. So if I have ore, then it's a profitable concentration of a mineral. I could have uranium ore, I could have gold ore, I could have copper ore, I could have aluminum ore. You get the idea. There's enough of that mineral in this regular rock mixture to make it worth mining, profitable. It can be high grade or low grade. High grade means there's a lot of copper in this rock. Low grade, there's some. But once again, it's a matter of cost. What I want is a high-grade mineral. That way we can mine it, we can get the copper out easy, and we make lots of money. If it's low-grade, it takes a lot more energy, a lot more work on our part, but we can still make money. So we're at, and what we'll do is we'll mine high-grade, and then we'll mine some of our lower-grade, and at a certain point, we call it, we say, yep, mine's done. It's just not worth getting anymore. We'll seal it off. Maybe sometime in the future when we get better mining techniques, it might be worthwhile, but for now, it's not cost efficient. So high-grade ore, a low-grade ore. Now, metallic mineral resources. So we have metallic and we have non-metallic, okay, whether it's metal. Now, most metals are shiny, they're malleable. Most metals tend to conduct electricity, not all, but... If we're talking about metallic mineral resources that we tend to be after, some of the big ones are aluminum. We use this in building, whether it's cars, buildings, airplanes, you name it. My cell, I don't I'm looking at it because so you said in my cell phone holder at my house. Aluminum and lots and lots of things. Steel. Now, steel is a mixture of iron and some other elements. When I first got into biking, I had a crow molly steel bike. Ah chromium alloy. They added chromium into the steel to make it stronger. But steel is basically iron and carbon. As you see the old blacksmith, you know, they heat it up in the fire, and they pull it out and they bang it, and then they stick it in the water, right? When it goes in the water, it's getting carbon into it, the carbon dioxide, carbon. And the carbon gets into it and they heat it again and bang it more carbon. Steel, iron plus carbon equals steel, but we can other, add other things into it like chromium, chrome, chrome alloy, steel, lots of different types. Anyway, going on and on and on. Copper, we use copper obviously in our electronics, copper wire, in our plugs that we put in, almost everything that's electronic of some shape, form, or fashion has copper in it. Gold, our copper, Gold and silver are really good conductors of electricity. Gold is the best, then silver, then copper. Copper is just a lot cheaper. So we make a thicker wire to conduct the electricity, but it's still a lot cheaper than using gold. But we use gold in certain computer components, etc., because it's such a much better conductor of electricity. And molybdenum. You know, what is molybdenum? Molybdenum is one of the highest melting rate and densities of metal that we have. It's actually used in a lot of various things, only tungsten, and it seems like there's one other metal has a higher density or melting rate than molybdenum because of its really high melting point. It's used in a lot of things. So we talked about metallic mineral resources. Well, we also have non-metallic mineral resources. What kind of mineral resources do we need that isn't metallic? Well, what about sand? <laughs> well, sand, we use that if we're making a building, right? 
Uh, they're building houses near my house right now, a new neighborhood. And the first thing they do is they clear it out and they lay it down with sand. And then over the sand, they put the concrete. But what do we use in concrete? Sand. In our all of our concrete building supplies, glass. My nice beaker for my coffee cup. Sand. You heat up the sand to melting point to make glass. We use it for all kinds of things. Another one, gravel. Yeah, just broken up rock. It's a non-metal, but it's a much needed resource. We put it underneath our roads as a bedrock. Sometimes when I was growing up, you had gravel driveways all over the place. Just put gravel. Now we lay the gravel down and you put asphalt or something over it to make it more solid. But we also use gravel in cement. Especially if you're making like a big building, you don't use all sand, that's higher grade. A lot of times you'll put a lot of rock in there for filler to smooth it all out. Limestone, now here in Florida, there's loads and loads of limestone, but it's calcium carbonate by and large. This is also used, you grind it up in the powder, we use limestone to make our cement with. You grind it up, you add water and it re-solidifies. So gypsum as well is another one used in a lot of building and phosphates. Phosphates, once again, it's a mineral, non-metallic. We use phosphates in our fertilizer. We also use phosphates in our laundry detergent to get my clothes sparkly clean. <laughs> Guys, that wraps it up for section one of chapter 14. Come back with me next time and we will look at supplies of our non-renewable resources. How much do we have left? <laughs> Take care. We'll see you next time.